Let's see if we can get the old girl to start up on a cold morning. I usually have to let these glow plugs light up for a while. <laughs> She's got some age on her now. All right, let's see here. Put that in neutral. Ah, uh, almost. <laughs> almost. Heat it up just a hair more. That seems to help. Should be good to go now. She's gonna be rough at first, but she should light this time. So four years ago, when my father bought this property, um, then we divided it up and my parents decided to build a house out here. My wife and I decided to build a house out here. We had a lot of work that needed to be done on this land and we knew we were gonna need a machine, <clears throat> a tractor. So my father had a Polaris Razor 900 at the time and he found this little old tractor here at a farm store and I think they basically did an Indian trade and uh, he swapped his Polaris Razor 900 for this for this tractor. And, um, you know, at the time, this tractor was 17 years old and the, uh, the hour meter was broken at 1,488 hours. I don't know. It, it could just be disconnected. To be honest, I've never pulled the dash out to see. Um, but it, it stopped working for some reason at 1,488 hours. Um, you know, it's just an old, well-used tractor, but we needed something out here to get some work done with, so he brought this thing home. It's actually starting to snow out here. Didn't expect that this morning. So this is a TC-29. It's a 1999 model, I believe. TC-29, New Holland. It's actually been a really good tractor. I mean, it was, like I said, it was well-used when he got it. You can tell by the bucket. <laughs> see how the edge of the bucket is just all mangled up. You can see where the hook almost came out of the bucket, where they've been lifting things with it. It was mangled up pretty good. The hood has got a crack in it. There's a crack down there at the bottom where something was dropped on it. You can see a great big indention here in the framework for the loader. It would take some serious force to do that. So something hit that pretty hard. I mean, just a really well used tractor. And like I said, the hour meter broke at 1488 or was disconnected, I guess could be. But like I said, it was, uh, it was a pretty uh, inexpensive deal because he just swapped out a Polaris for it. And in the last four years, we've, we've actually used this tractor pretty hard. We've done some things with this tractor that to be honest, it just wasn't really designed to do. You know, he got this big box blade here to work on our driveways. That's an actual five footer, which is starting to get a little bit big for a tiny tractor, but it seems to handle it okay. We've used the heck out of that loader, moving gigantic rock and bedrock that we've been uh, trenching up for our utility lines and what have you. We've drug massive trees out of the woods. A lot of those trees out through there were dead. There's still some dead ones in there, but when we got this place, there was a lot of full grown ash and oak trees that were dead. We did a lot of chainsawing and dragging them out of the woods with this thing. I mean, it's, it's been beat on pretty good. Um, we did fill the, the rear tires up with some liquid ballast so that uh, it would make it a little bit more capable because when we first got it, we were doing such heavy duty work with it that the uh, the tractor would kind of get tipsy but anyway you know I, I did another full service on it this summer the only thing i haven't done yet is the front axle which needs to be done but um i have to be honest we haven't really had any serious trouble with this thing it hasn't broken down it's still hanging in there it's 21 years old now got a ton of hours on it 
it's been beaten on and it just keeps coming back for more it's been a fantastic tractor but age is starting to creep up on it and we've noticed that the clutch is starting to slip you know this was back in the uh this was back in the time when almost everything was gear shift and not shuttle shift either just straight manual shift and when you put the sub transmission in high range you can tell that the clutch is starting to slip um, in medium it's not too bad and you can't really tell it in low range yet uh, but when you put it in high range it's uh it's starting to slip pretty bad and as you know that's a pretty huge job to swap out the clutch on something like this because you actually have to disassemble the tractor itself you got to split this thing in half and it's just a pretty huge job for a homeowner and uh so that's kind of been an issue that's creeping up on us there's a leak up here and i haven't really dug into it yet to see exactly where it's coming from or how big of a job that would be but it's been leaking a little bit up there so and there's a couple other issues too i mean it just it's going to need some money put into it it's been a great tractor you know it's been uh you know just a really great tool for for us and for the people who owned it before us but i'm thinking that it's time maybe to move up to something more modern something newer so i've been kind of shopping around to see what's out there now this tractor is 29 horsepower 28 horsepower something like that tc29 i believe was just shy of 30 horsepower um and in today's world if you get a tractor that has this horsepower level you start to go to the uh tier four emissions that has the dpf on it and all that stuff so and to be honest with you all of the big jobs that we were doing around here dragging the huge trees and hauling giant loads of rock that we dug up out of the ground and all that kind of stuff those jobs hopefully are over with now so you know this tractor got all that stuff done for us um it was plenty big enough you know maybe we were a little bit hard on it but it got the job done so i'm thinking that now that those jobs are out of the way and what's left is grading driveways pushing snow you know uh moving brush you know smaller jobs i probably don't need a bigger tractor something this size or smaller you know maybe even a tad smaller would be fine and if you stay below 26 horsepower um, you can avoid having the diesel particulate filter and all that stuff on your tractor so i'm kind of shopping like the compacts and the subcompacts i've really been looking at the subcompacts pretty hard and uh, i think i think something like that would actually be great because then i could get you know the backhoe a grapple i could get some other attachments and keep the price in check so anyway i've been kind of looking around at some things first tractor i went to look at was the rural king 24 the rk24 and i think today i might go check out some kubotas you know and just kind of look at those and see what they've got to offer but anyway if you want to follow along i'll show you what i have seen so far and what i've noticed about these things got some uh some snow on the windshield now i love how this thing goes to a factory hot idle i think i've mentioned that before so you can see my diesel exhaust fluid is uh, getting really low and the plan was I was gonna let it get low on purpose because I want to see how this thing will really react I mean it gives me messages on the screen saying that the engine won't restart uh, if it runs out and it basically gives you a warning that you've got so many miles to go but I'm curious uh, well maybe I shouldn't maybe I shouldn't test it maybe I should just go ahead and fill it up I think uh, some other guy said that it, it, it honestly will keep you from restarting the truck if you let it run all the way out so another reason that uh, this is probably gonna be my last DPF equipped truck I'm getting to the point where I'm already not real happy with all the emissions stuff that they put on these things nowadays and it's even more reason why I don't want to get a new tractor that has all this stuff on it yeah, I mean, on, on some of those tractors, uh, they don't have automatic regeneration. So when it's time to do a regen, you have to park the tractor and let it sit there. 
you put it in regen mode and you had to let it sit there for like 30 minutes. I mean, who wants to let their tractor sit there and waste fuel for 30 minutes while you can't get any work done? You know, it's just ridiculous. Now, some of the higher end tractors apparently do have um, automatic regen, sort of like this truck does, where you can still use it while it's doing its regen process. But usually those tractors are a little bit more expensive. Um, some of them that I looked at, like for instance, the RK37, um, really nice tractor, really nice price range, but I think it's one of those where you have to let it just sit there and do regen cycles. So another reason to stay at 26 horsepower or below when you're getting a new tractor, I guess, huh? <laughs> now, one thing about this RK24, it does not have tilt steering. It doesn't look like the 37 over there does. So you don't have a tilt steering wheel, which would have been kind of nice. And you don't have a separate seat back here for your backhoe. You have to raise this seat up and flip it around, um, which from experience can be kind of a pain in the neck. But, um, you know, it, other than that, it has some features, though, that are kind of rare. I mean, look at this. You've got standard valves back here. Uh, so you got this function back here that's standard, which is optional on a lot of, a lot of other tractors. <laughs> kind of nice armrests on the seat just trying to check it out here again you do have the mechanical thumb standard these are 27 inch tires but I think you can get uh, you can get up to like a uh, I want to say a 32 or 33 if you go with a turf tire you can get an ag tire on there which is a little bit taller and more narrow so you've got some tire options um, yeah, I mean, all in all, it's a pretty, pretty nice tractor, especially for the money. Hmm. What do you think? It's got a nice LED work light here. I noticed that it has the skid steer quick attach on the loader. I mean, you really do get a lot of things that are optional on other brands as standard equipment on these. Got a cup holder, 12 volt outlet. I mean, it really is a nice tractor, especially for the money. And of course, these are made by TYM, so, you know, they've been making stuff for lots of brands for a long, long, long time. So it's not like it's gonna be a poor quality tractor, you know? You can get parts and service right here at the store for them, so. I mean, there's, it's got a lot of good things going for it, for sure. I would just have to do something with this valve, or this control here. All that would have to be relocated some reason this camera just does not want to focus today <laughs> I think it's cold too sorry about that pop the hood and you can see the battery it's down there low but it is in the front coolant bottle you do have the debris screen you can pull out this is the exact same Yanmar engine that they use in the John Deere um, 1025R looks like the exact same engine so air filter i mean everything looks like it's pretty pretty easy to locate for maintenance and everything do have a metal hood on it i guess these side panels they look like they can come off as well not bad you know i was looking at this and it looks like the way that they've got this mounted it does have some adjustability built into it so it looks like that you can kind of clock those controls upward a little bit. And even if that wasn't enough, I mean, it's just got two bolts here that go into this bracket. So, see there? So it would be, you know, if you're any good at fabricating at all, it would be a piece of cake to move this a little bit. But I like, I like seeing that. There's some adjustability already built in there. So that may not be as big of an issue as I thought. Uh, to, you know to do something with that Now the only thing that uh, of course, I guess it's Something that most of these hydrostatic tractors don't have is well, I say that but I, don't know, I was talking about the auto throttle, you know where you can set it the, the harder you press You know the, the more the throttle increases automatically not really 100% sure if this tractor has that or not. I don't think it does. That'd be kind of cool. But but yeah, I mean, I'm really impressed with this. I've kind of been looking this thing over for about 10 minutes now. I'm really impressed with it, especially for the money.
This is uh, number one on my list right now. I turned the seat around so I can kind of get a feel for what the operator station feels like when you're using the backhoe. And actually, it's it's pretty comfy. I don't feel cramped in here at all. I don't feel uncomfortable. I'm not in a bad position. You know, it's, this would work out really good, actually. So, you know, the average size fellow would have no trouble at all. Nice. Here's a little Deer 1025R. Obviously, they've got the Deer proprietary system to hook the bucket up. It does have a work light on it. Diesel fuel feel is up on the fender, which is much nicer than being up on the hood. You can see where the uh, control is for the bucket over there on the fender, which is much nicer. This is a comfortable machine. I sat on it a little while ago and it was really comfy. Uh, the tires seem to be a little bit smaller than the tires on the RK tractor I looked at earlier. Got some real tiny little tires on it. Still runs the Yanmar engine. It's got the cruise control setting and all that on it. So, I mean, I was kind of looking up under the engine compartment for uh, maintenance issues or, you know, like maintenance access, I guess. But uh, the way you open the hood on these is a little more difficult. Come around front, you got a nice brush guard. The hydraulic lines are run nice and neat. And over on the right side, you can see where the uh, remotes are, where the function valves are. You know, and you've got these things that kind of dangle down here. I can see where some guys are talking about this being a potential issue, especially if you're doing some stuff, you know, off in the woods or whatever. You get sticks and stumps coming up under your tractor. That could be a problem, especially with the low ground clearance these things have on them. But I do like where the pedals are, kind of like the RK tractor. Very comfortable, very nice, easy to get to. There's the oil filter and everything. I mean, it's a neat looking little tractor. It's got the stuff you need. 12 volt outlet cup holders. Not too bad. Now this tractor doesn't have the rear remotes like the RK tractor. It comes with them standard. On the John Deere, it's an option. So if you want some you know, function back here, you gotta add it and add, uh, you know, pay more money for it. So I guess if you're going to look at tractors, you would be remiss if you didn't at least look at the green ones, right? <laughs> and there was a dealer on the way, so I decided to whip in there real quick and check them out. You know, I like the John Deere's. I don't really, you know, have a lot of dislike for them or anything. But in those subcompacts, I just, I don't know. They, they seemed a little narrower. Uh, the tires were smaller. There were some things about the design that I'm just not real crazy about, to be honest. And, you know, I asked him about the pricing and... Seems like the pricing's a few thousand dollars more than the other ones I've looked at so far. So, I don't know. I'm not going to count John Deere out just yet. But after I looked at it for a while, eh, I think I'm going to keep it down lower on the list. So, let's check out the number one selling brand in these subcompacts. There's some Kubotas. This one's a 2380. I really wanted to look at a 2680, but it doesn't look like they have a 2680 in stock. COVID and all the other stuff going on this year has caused supply to be really low on a lot of this stuff. But just looking around back here, I mean, it looks pretty robust. There's a lot of things here that are similar to some of the other brands, and there's a lot of things that are different than the other brands. But uh, again, you know, you got the small tires, kind of like what we had over there on the John Deere. Really tiny tires up front too, so the ground clearance ends up being pretty low. You know, I'm not really sure this would handle a five foot box blade. I don't know. Maybe the 2680. I should wait until I can find a 2680, probably. Fuel feel right here on the fender where it belongs. Joystick over here on the fender where it belongs. This is interesting. So instead of the uh, traditional looking treadle pedal, you got just a pedal here for reverse, flat floorboard, and a pedal for forward. That's kind of interesting. They may have been doing this for a long time. I'm a rookie at this. I'm just now shopping these things. But this is the first time I've seen it like this. That's interesting. 
this might actually be better than having just the big rocker control, uh, especially if you got big feet like me. Kind of like the uh, the overall, you know, aesthetics of it and everything. You know, you've got a lot of leg room here because the dash is kind of vertical. Interesting. You see where the remotes are kind of the, uh, the valves are kind of out of the way. They're not hanging down here like the John Deere. They're kind of up, you know, in a safer location there. I like that. Yeah, the leg room is pretty amazing on this tractor. Like I said, you know, the way that that's so vertical there, the way the design is, I mean, and I kind of, see, I can get to that and then, I don't know. I like the I like the leg room on this tractor. Like it's really comfortable. Armrests are where they need to be. Yeah, not too bad. Looks like it does have a tilt wheel. Got your headlight switch over there. Throttle. Interesting. It's funny because these subcompacts have so many things in common, but yet they have so many differences too. You know. Looks like they have a whole lot of the 23 S's. This one's got a little backhoe on it. They've got a ton of those. I wish they had some 2680s over here. I guess those are all sold out. It's probably their more popular model. But one thing that I'm noticing for sure, as I look at the Kubotas, John Deere's, is that a lot of the things on here are optional that you get on the RK standard. So there really is a value there with those real king tractors made by TYM. All right, so this is the 23S that has the backhoe on it. And what I'm noticing here is that the seat is really different because obviously on these, the seat flips around so you can use the backhoe. But what it's doing is it's giving me the sensation of pushing me forward. You know, it's like the seat cushion does, uh, it's got more of a forward tilt to it. I don't really like that. That one over there without the backhoe was comfy. This one is not comfy. I don't like it. And the more I sit here and play with this, the more I don't like this either because what happens is when I go to hit reverse, my shoe gets caught up in there and I have to lift my whole leg up and then hit it. Lift my whole leg up and then, you know, I have to, it would wear out your leg <laughs> if you're just on the pedal and you try to slide back to the reverse pedal, you can't do it. You gotta lift up and that's kind of annoying from an ergonomic standpoint. That's why it's good to sit on these things and spend some time sitting on them and, you know, kind of get a feel for them. So there are a couple of things on this backhoe model that I don't really like, to be honest. And they also don't have a skid steer style quick attach. You know, the way these Kubotas are made, you just have one big cylinder here to tilt your bucket and the rest of it looks like it's pinned on. You've got that little mechanism there. It's kind of a Kubota proprietary looking thing, but this would not be good for swapping out multiple implements on the front here. Hmm. So here is a used 2601. This is a B2601. It's a 2019 model. It's a used tractor. They're asking $13,000 for it. It does have the skid steer style quick attach for the bucket up there. The tires are obviously larger. This is more of what I'm kind of thinking in my mind that I would like to have as far as size and capability, ground clearance and all that. Uh, but like I said, it's a used tractor. It's two years old now. And they're asking 13 grand for it, which is more than I can get a new RK tractor for. So I don't know, but you can see this one's got that older style. I guess it's the older style treadle pedal on it. and. I just don't really like that. I don't know. I know some guys love it, but I just, this is something that I don't really like. I don't like that design. It's not very user friendly to me, but I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty nice looking tractor, but I just can't really bring myself to pay that kind of money for something that's already two years old. And I don't know how many hours are on it. Oh, it's only got, 35 hours on it according to the meter so it hasn't been used a whole lot but uh, it's pretty dirty and it's got a lot of scratches and stuff all over it so those 35 hours were apparently pretty rough hours <laughs> but uh, you do have a toolbox back here cup holder 
basic seat. Looks like it's got an ag style tire on the front that doesn't really match the industrial tires on the rear. So I don't know if somebody has swapped out the front tires for something different or what. Interesting. So I climbed aboard the 2601. The first thing I noticed is look at that rubber mat moving around. <laughs> I mean, what in the world? What's going on here? This is a two year old tractor that has only 35 hours on it and it's already coming apart. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Either somebody was super, super rough on this thing or these tractors are just not what they're cracked up to be. I'm starting to think the latter might be true. And that treadle pedal, as they call it. I mean, that's just, I don't know. Again, I guess this is personal preference, but I just, I can't stand that. You know, some people do it like, like this, where they put their foot under there. When they want to go, it's just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just, I don't see why it's not just as easy to put two pedals up here. Like all the other brands, put two pedals up there where they belong. You know, this, doing this crap right here will just give you a calf muscle cramp by the end of the day. So I don't know. I gave these things a fair shake and checked them out. But honestly, I'm just not really impressed with them. There's a lot of stuff on these Kubotas that's expensive. It's optional. Um, you got to really go up in series to get some decent features. I'm not real wild about how the backhoe attaches. I don't really like the seat on the backhoe versions. And um, above everything else, the hydrostatic throttle control is a deal breaker for me. Um, the new style may be a little bit better, but still, I just I don't like it. So I think I'm going to cross Kubota off the list. All right, so I stopped at a New Holland dealer and I found one Workmaster 25S. This place over here is a very big agricultural area, so most of the tractors they sell are going to be the bigger ones. But they do have this one little subcompact. And uh, again, you don't have the rear remotes. I guess that's probably optional. Got a toolbox over here on the side. You can, unlike some tractors in this class, you can use your mid PTO or your mid and rear PTO together or just the rear PTO. So that's kind of nice if you've got a mower, if you're going to do some mowing and you've got some implements out back too or whatever. I don't know. I mean, this it's a pretty simple looking mower. Um, mower. Pretty simple looking tractor. This one's actually a used one. You can see where it's got some scuff in there where people have been getting on and off of it but it does have good leg room it's not quite as roomy and spacious as the Kubota operator station but the pedals are where they belong you know you got your forward and reverse pedals over here where you can easily get to them so that's a major plus very simple controls on this one in fact I don't see a cruise control feature unless yeah, here, here it is. Cruise control feature must be down here. But the operator station and the layouts of the controls is very simple on the New Holland. Not a whole lot to it. You notice that the joystick is up here, but at least it's out of the way. You know, it's not really like hitting my leg and getting all up in my way and everything. So that's, that's an improvement over the Rural King as far as that goes. So your two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive selector over there. The seat feels pretty comfy, but then again, this one doesn't have a backhoe on it, so it's really kind of hard to say. But it has really, really tiny tires. This is the smallest tire on the front that I've seen on any of the subcompacts that I've looked at so far, which is very interesting. I don't know what year model this is, since it's a used one, but it does have a Yanmar engine in it. I think Yanmar pretty much supplies the engines for all of these tractors. Doesn't matter what the brand is, you're probably gonna have a Yanmar engine in it. The bucket is a pin on, doesn't have a quick disconnect on this one, but I think that's optional on here. So once again, you're getting into that situation where the RK tractors just, they've got a lot of standard features that are optional on all these other, you know, name brands, if you wanna call it that, the more known name brands. You gotta pay extra to get stuff that the RK gives you 
for less money. That's the thing about it. You get all that stuff standard on the Rural King tractor and it's less money. You know, something like this is going to cost the same amount or more. And you got to buy all the extra stuff. So, so I don't know. I mean, it's, it does have a quick park loader. You can see your uh, pin here that you can remove. You've got your leg here. You can swing down. You can park the, the loader pretty quickly. I don't know. I mean, it's a nice little tractor, but I don't see anything on the new Holland that sets it apart from the other ones. I don't see anything on here that just really makes me, you know, gravitate toward this one. So that was kind of interesting. It was good just to sit on them and, you know, kind of get a feel for the operator station and where the controls are and what it would be like to actually use the thing for a few hours each day or something. Um, there's a few more brands I'd like to go check out. Yanmar and Cody and a couple other ones that, you know, they're kind of lesser heard of brands, but they're actually pretty good tractors, according to what people tell me. So who knows? We may go check out a whole lot of different brands. You know, this would be a pretty big purchase and something, you know, I plan on keeping for the rest of my life. So uh, I want to do some good research and make sure that I get uh, what I want. So, but anyway... It's cold out here, so I'm going to go back in the house, I think. But appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned because there's more coming. Thanks.